Just have somebody ice foam, get them all set, ready to go. It takes a fighter with a sharp pair of shears to cut through the world of floral design. Okay. You have these? They're working on the shoes? And in an industry built largely on century-old traditions, Jane Carroll has a reputation for being sharper than most. Jane, we got to spread these guys out. She brings a sense of fashion to floral design. I can make anything out of flowers. She's built her empire by thinking outside of the box, by using a box, and making it in a world she could never have predicted. I would have thought she would have followed my father's footsteps and become a steam fitter. Jane Carroll is one tough gal. I would truly say the only manure in her life is what she uses with her plants. With one incredible story about making her way to the very top. All right, girls, we got 50 left. From this upstate New York studio, Jane Carroll runs her lucrative flower empire. And today, the annual Christmas rush is in full nerve-jangling swing. One box, that's it. Just line them up. It'll go a lot faster, trust me. If these delicate arrangements don't make it from here to any American city within 24 hours in perfect condition, it's money back to the customer and zero profit for her company. Can we fire them after the holiday? No wonder Jane Carroll takes a hands-on approach to almost every facet of her business. Putting anything on top of it, Emilio? It's one of the most important lessons she's learned in the 10 years it's taken to build her thriving, multi-million dollar business. Think for yourself. And when necessary, do it yourself. I mean, she literally can be doing five things at once. She's not stressed by that. She takes the work home, sleep, drinks it, eats it, and that's why it's so successful. But it's not just hard work. Jane's always approached things from a slightly different point of view. What I loved about Jane's designs right away was their simplicity and their creativity, their uniqueness. When Jane Carroll looks at flowers, it's not as potential bouquets, but as living pieces of art. Not suited for vases or lapels, but for her signature design called Boxed in Blooms. This is still the classic. This was the first piece. These unique floral creations have taken Jane Carroll on an incredible journey from this workroom to the homes of A-list celebrities and the covers of mass market magazines. A road to success littered with personal sacrifice and complete satisfaction. Jane Carroll, if I knew what it was gonna be like, I don't know if I would have done it. But that's the beauty of not knowing. So if you don't know, you don't know you're going to fail. You don't know you're going to have ups and downs. So you're continuously just going. Nothing in Jane Carroll's early years indicated that flowers would be her ticket to fame and fortune. She grew up in the Bronx, the second eldest in a working class family with four kids and no money. We were the typical Bronx family where the fathers were union workers and the mothers stayed at home. It was not a well-to-do community. My father was an extremely talented man who drank way too much. He never could get over whatever issues he had. So even as a child, Jane would be there whenever her father couldn't. Anytime we got in trouble in the neighborhood, she was always there like to defend us. She was almost like my, my big brother would be. Jane was a tomboy. I used to say to my husband, this is the son you're never going to have. Growing up, well, her best friends were boys. And then she turned into this floral designer, which <laughs> I don't know where it came from. She went into business for herself in order to escape the Bronx, a dream she first had as an athletic teenager. I wanted to be the first girl ever to play for the New York Yankees. <laughs> And I thought I was going to be when I was a kid. She was very competitive in baseball, basketball. You know, she had a drive. During high school, Jane was offered her first chance to escape, a tuition-only basketball scholarship, but was heartbroken to learn her mother wouldn't allow it. She said, I mean, there's no, there's no way. We just can't afford it. So we nixed the basketball scholarship. We just kind of felt girls got married and had families, and the husband took care of them, and they stayed home and took care of their kids like we did. Not like that anymore. 
But for Jane, it was like that at the time. After graduating high school, she took any job she could find. Museum guide, nursing home aid, bartender. It's hardly surprising she would fall for the first man who seemed to have all that she didn't. He was much older than me, and he had a great job. He worked for a bank, he was a foreign exchange trader, and I was dating him, and I got pregnant. I got pregnant, then got married. And we bought a house immediately in the Bronx. A house to which she brought along some unexpected tenants. My mother moved in to the basement apartment, and my two brothers moved in. Her father, suffering from chronic alcoholism, could no longer support his family. Not being able to take care of your family, I mean, it, it, it was horrible to watch him. The house got even more crowded after her son Michael was born. There was no way I was working. I thought it was very important to stay at home with him until he started school. But she never gave up hope of escaping the Bronx. It was while leaving a night school sewing class at Parsons' new school of design that Jane first saw the opportunity that would change her life just down the hall. There was an Ikebana class going on. And I stood at the door and I thought it was fascinating because I've never seen arrangements like that. I loved this flower class and I thought, this is perfect. I could do this from home. I could do weddings in the neighborhood. I can advertise in the local penny saver. Working out of her basement, neighborhood weddings suddenly gave Jane and her family an immediate sense of purpose and hope. We all worked for her. Her sister-in-law and I, we used to drive the truck with the flowers in the back, and she would call me Big Mac, and I would call her Little Mac, and it was like the whole family would, you know, be running. I'm going to do weddings, I'm going to be party planner, I'm going to make a lot of money, and I'm going to get the hell out of the Bronx. <laughs> that was the plan, that was the goal. And for a while it seemed to be working, but as the business picked up, Jane's marriage began to crumble. She was at it round the clock, seven days a week. Perfect. There was no animosity. We just felt we were taking different roads here, and like, and she was taking off. And I said, well, you know, am I going to be a hindrance here, or am I going to be helpful? He was married to this lunatic who did nothing but work and take care of her family and, you know, trying to get somewhere. We worried about Michael. I said, I'll take care of him at home for a while, and then you'll take care of him and on weekends and stuff. So back and forth, we went for like a couple of years. I felt like I'm going to do this business and make this work and then everybody will be happy and everything will be wonderful. Well, it doesn't happen that way. Her marriage over, her son living full time with his dad. News then came that Jane's father had passed away. Now it was official. She and her family were completely on their own. Bottom line for me, he failed and I was going to pick up the pieces and I was going to take care of my brothers, my sister, my mother. Where he couldn't do it, I was, I was determined to do it. Her name's Jane Carroll, and with her unique boxed in blooms flower designs, She's carved a lucrative niche in one of the toughest markets there is, the $18 billion a year flower industry, where developing a business model around such a delicate product isn't for the faint of heart. If I sold nails, it would be so much easier. Perishable items, you can only get them a day or two before you're due to ship out. They have no shelf life, unlike a box of nails. Can you tell me, how much is the rosemary running? We are bringing in flowers daily from probably 140 different countries around the world. Where are these from? Italy. And then when I send it out to the consumer, I need to make sure it's got style. Because the product is a beautiful product. A rose is a rose and it's beautiful. So then take it with a capability like Jane brings to the table and add a sense of style. And we make magic happen for our customers. But Jane Carroll's magic was many years in the making. It was only after leaving her husband that her wedding flowers business really began to thrive. For the first time, Jane was getting noticed beyond her neighborhood borders. People started noticing my flowers, and it wasn't just in the Bronx. I actually started getting clients in Westchester County, which when we were growing up, that's a very well-to-do area. So I thought, OK, these people are liking it, so there must be something to it. I was very impressed with myself at that point. 
quite impressed enough to move her entire operation to this facility she works from to this day. You got something for me, Wanda? But back then, she had no idea how to run a real business. And soon enough, the pressure to pay staff and overhead became too much. Our doors were closed many a time in the beginning. I mean, they almost had the padlock on the door where you had no retail business, where you were struggling. And we just kept going up and down. Couldn't afford a place to live. So I slept in the office for about three years. We fell behind in rent for like five months. Thank God the owners of the property believed in what I was doing and believed in me. And at those points, I would sit there and just think to myself, I'm crazy. I should just do what everybody's telling me to do and go get a regular job and give it up. It's not going to happen. I would wake up like on a Saturday morning in the office to people like looking through the front door, wondering what the hell my business was as I was sleeping on the couch. It didn't help that she was starting out at the same time as the internet was taking off. Jane's young dot-com neighbors became a source of fascination. They don't have a product, they don't have a business plan, but at the time, anybody who had an idea and a web address could go public. So I watched these guys as they had investors pouring millions and millions of dollars and like 21 years old. I used to think to myself, I'm just in the wrong business. When the market crashed, Jane felt secretly vindicated. A lot of people had a hard time with the dot-com bubble bursting, but I sat there and reveled in it <laughs> and kept my business going. Bricks and mortar, but I kept it going. Going well enough, it turned out, to get a phone call that would change her life. The phone rang and it was Oprah Winfrey's office. On a whim, Jane had spent three days composing a letter to television's most powerful woman. Of course, everybody in my company laughed at me and said, yeah, good luck. They wanted to know if Jane had any retail floral products their readers could order and have safely shipped to them across the country. She didn't. So on the spot, Boxton Blooms was born. I hung up the phone and I started screaming and then I started crying because I knew at that moment, I was destined to do what I believed in my head I was meant to do. She was right. Only a few months later, Jane's unique floral designs were featured on Oprah's influential O-list. And virtually overnight, a flower designer to the stars was born. Out of nowhere. I mean, one minute, nobody knew the name Jane Carroll. The next minute, you're saying, my God, she's fabulous. Her work is fabulous. Halle Berry was our first celebrity that contacted us. She started calling and then she kept calling and calling and calling. She gave my name to Angela Bassett and it just kept snowballing. From newspaper and magazine articles to television appearances, the word on Jane was getting out fast. Once you've received something that's been done by Jane, you want to spread the word. It's like you're a convert. It's an odd little weird cult. Can I just say the first time I met this lady, she served me hard lemonade, okay? <laughs> I was employing her left and right. I mean, buying her flowers whenever I could or getting them really as gifts from people because her flowers are more than just flowers. They're masterpieces. And I found her just an amazing, amazingly inspirational woman. So too did Oprah, who next invited Jane to personally appear on the Oprah Winfrey Show itself. To top it off, she would make some incredibly important statements. She, of course, said that she'd never buy fresh flowers from anybody other than me. And my business just went through the roof. And I just kept saying, I mean, that's Jane, tomboy, who I thought maybe would play for the Yankees someday. <laughs> to be a floral designer and be out there with Oprah, and she was very cool and very collected. And we were all very impressed. It wasn't long before big business came calling, too, especially 1-800-Flowers, the most powerful internet-based name in the flower biz. Right away, I knew we needed to offer that type of creativity to our customer, and it seemed like a marriage made in heaven. I told him at that point, I said, I'm not, I'm not interested in selling my company. I mean, my, I, I killed myself for this. I said, Jane, nobody's looking for you to sell out. We're looking to form a partnership here and something that we can grow together. And grow together they have, grossing nearly $2 million last year alone. It was a very smart business role. Not quite so smart, however, was Jane's next venture when the high rollers of Las Vegas invited her to open a retail store in Caesar's Palace. The president of the casino was a phenomenal man, gave me major opportunity, Got to do a lot of work with Elton John. 
I did the interior for Elton's penthouse. It got me into interior designing. But even Jane was forced to admit it was too much too soon. Traveling all the time, she missed her son and family and the hands-on business approach she prefers, which cost her dearly. She wasn't around to notice what many believed. Her staff was robbing her blind. I'm like one of those very trusting people. It was a hard lesson to learn how people will lie. And I think she finally realized, you know what, that's too glitzy and phony baloney. And she came back to her roots. Jane's very firmly in her roots. Less than two years after it began, Jane decided to fold the Vegas operation and return to New York, where fate would play its fickle hand once more. Jane Carroll spent her youth building her flower business while her young son Michael was being raised by his father. But today, Michael lives with his mother and enjoys a youth she never knew. Along with the family dog Guinness, he's living large with a very cool mom. She's not like the normal mom, like, she's not like one of the really old moms that usually my friends have, like they're all 50, like she's still young and she still knows what goes around today, so like I could basically ask her anything. You've been to badminton. I've been to badminton. If I call the school, they're going to say Michael has been to badminton. Yeah. But Jane's generosity extends beyond her son. Eugene, her ex-husband, is now a full-time employee. Well, we know each other. We know her pretty well, and she knows what annoys me and what doesn't annoy me, and I pretty know when to keep quiet, and so we give ourselves space. Did you get all the tickets out? We're getting them all. Did you print out the tickets? Yes, I did. So I got my friend to come along with us, Joe, and... Uh, we pretty much took the financial end of it into packing and the uh, deliveries and the pickups. That's what we did. I should see that. For a single successful woman, Jane's brutal self-imposed schedule has taken a toll on her love life. I'm Jane Carroll. Some of the men that I've dated, they date a woman who owns a business and then they're all of a sudden critiquing what I should do, what I shouldn't do, what's wrong with my business, what's right with my business. And here I'm thinking, I just need to send out a phenomenal product that's perfectly packaged, that gets to California perfectly on a Friday morning. My mother still complains. Can't you meet a man? I don't like to see her by herself. Her business is tough. And it's up and it's down. And You know, it's so much easier if they're very secure in there. But she'll do OK. Always striving to do more than OK. Jane next agreed to feature her flower designs on the Home Shopping Network. It soon became a total and expensive fiasco. I'm working with a perishable item. So we inventoried for 100% sellout, and we did maybe 30%. So 70% of the product went in the garbage. The labor was they stood around for days. I couldn't get my own product out the way it should have, and it was just a, a total disaster. Hundreds of thousands of dollars thrown in the garbage. The experience only reaffirmed to Jane that she should stick to what got her going in the first place. I need to go more with my gut because I know what works and what doesn't work for my business. My name's on it, it's my reputation, and like I tell everybody in the office, we're only as good as the last package you shipped out today. Jane Carroll may run a multi-million dollar flower design enterprise, but she still works in her studio every day, creating designs, supervising every aspect of production. I think it's the busiest day we've had. Business is up and looking better than ever. And on this busy pre-Valentine's Day, even her son Michael pitches in. 48 straight hours. Her story reflects that you don't have to know exactly what you want to do to make something wonderful happen. At any point in your life, you can stumble upon something, know that it's right for you, and embrace it. No more orders. Now we just have to get these orders out that we took. We're overwhelmed. I have to shut you down. Raise the glass. Yeah. This, is, this, is, this is to our family. 
Jane Carroll embraces business and family as one. Her son, sister, and cousins, ex-husband, friends, and mother all work for her today. I'm with my mother all the time, and I think that she felt that I took from my childhood that everything was bad, and what I tell her now is that it's what made me who I am, and I'm very proud of who I am. And like I always tell my son, nobody writes about perfect people. It's the people who overcome, builds character, and I believe that. You didn't come to hear Jane sing? I said, can Jane sing? Oh, she's nice. She's she was always very supportive of, of my endeavors. You have to do These days, plans are afoot for a book about her life, an expansion into more interior design work. No matter how talented, uh, she is and how famous she becomes quote unquote because so many celebrities now want her her work Jane always I, remains planted and I think that's what makes her she knows who she is she doesn't buy into the bull one way or the other I would truly say the only manure in her life is what she uses with her plants she's come a real long way she never had anything at one point like she had her business and that was it now she has more things to look forward to now that everything she's accomplished so that's one thing I could take from her is not to give up. I'm thrilled that my son and I have a great life. Bye, bye, Jeff. And I love not knowing what's next. I love that.